Hey everyone, welcome. It's Naomi and today I want to talk to you about back to school shopping and making your back to school shopping a little bit more environmentally friendly or more green. So whether or not you have kids who are young or kids who are older, whether or not you are new to back to back to school shopping or you're a you're, you know, total old hand at this and you've done it loads of times, I think there are always ways that we can shift our choices around making purchases at the back to school time that are a little bit more environmentally conscious and a little bit better for the planet. So let's dive right in with some of my top tips for a more environmentally, more green back to school. So the first thing that I want to talk about are those big lists of things that you often get from teachers about what they need at the beginning of the school, or maybe it's on your uh, school sort of um, homepage, right? And it'll be a whole list of things that you have to bring in for the school year for your kids, which I totally get and is totally, you know, like, I mean, actually, I don't get it. I feel like schools should really be providing all of those materials and the fact that it's not in the budget for that is kind of screwed up actually but that's a blog for another time okay but seriously those supply lists that you get from your teachers or from your school are usually full of not so environmentally friendly items and there are a couple of ways to handle that situation okay the first way to handle it is really just to look for you know some of the supplies that you can get that are a little bit more environmentally friendly or companies that um, have more environmentally friendly practices. So, you know, just really making a conscious effort to not get, you know, rolls of paper towels that are wrapped in plastic, you know, or to get rolls of paper towels that are made out of recycled paper. Um, if you really do want to look into getting paper towels that are not wrapped in plastic, you should check out companies like Who Gives a Crap, which is a company that makes toilet paper wrapped in paper instead of in plastic. But they also sell tissue boxes and they sell um, they sell paper towel rolls and in, in addition to toilet paper. So you can get a lot of really great supplies from them without using plastic, which I think is really awesome. Okay. You can other. You can also look at other companies that do markers that are made out of biodegradable materials, or you know things that you know even those wipes. Like we are asked to get like wipes and Ziploc bags and stuff like that. There are better companies that are doing a little bit better when it comes to materials that are not as damaging for the planet. So you can certainly look for those, and that can be a really big help when it comes to you know, getting supplies for your school. Another thing that you can do is actually talk to your school about some of the environmental implications of getting these huge supply lists that are not always particularly environmentally friendly and give them resources because oftentimes schools, you know, are just doing, you know, what they know and they are doing what they did the year before and they're sort of following those same patterns and same routines that they've always had, right? Directing you to Walmart or to Target or, you know, to some of those other places. And there are a lot of better places that you can shop and they might even be able to start looking for places where they can get discounts for you so that it doesn't feel like you are spending a ton of money on um, supplies that you know are better for the environment but might cost a little bit more so that's one way that you can level it up a little bit and give more information to your school not only for this school year but for the school years to come okay so I think the next thing that we can talk about is actually back to school clothes and back to school backpacks and lunch boxes and all of the things that we often feel like we have to replace at the beginning of the new school year you don't have to replace them you don't have to do it. I'm just going to I'm going to tell you that right now. <laughs> no matter how much it might feel like you have to or you might feel pressured to from, you know, like ads or commercials or, you know, your own kids, you don't actually have to. You know, my own kids are using the same backpacks that they used last year and they're just fine. They don't have holes. They're not completely destroyed. They are completely still usable, and until their backpacks are no longer usable, until their lunch boxes are no longer usable, they're going to use the same ones, right? Same goes for water bottles, same goes for anything that they're going to bring with them when it comes to school, right? When it comes to backpacks or lunch boxes or anything like that that they've used the year before. As long as it's in still good condition, it's good to go, okay? 
Now, when it comes to clothes, I think a lot of times too, we feel a lot of pressure to get new clothes for our kids at the beginning of the school year. But the question to ask yourself is actually, have they grown over the summer, right? Can they still wear some of the clothes that they had at the end of the last school year? You know, like I know that my daughter still fits into a lot of the clothes that she was wearing last year. Um, in part because she's a little bit on the smaller side, but in part just because like some of those clothes were actually really big on her and she's just fine in them. Same goes for my son. Um, so I don't really look at the school year as an opportunity, like the beginning of the school year rather, as an opportunity to like, you know, do all of my purchasing and get all new clothes. I really look at it more as like, when do they need them? If they need new clothes in September, sure, I will get new clothes in September. If they don't need new clothes in September, we can wait until they actually need new clothes, right? She doesn't, they don't need like a brand new dress or brand new shoes or brand new anything on the first day of school. They just need to be wearing clothes. That's sort of a rule. Now, when it comes to buying those clothes, if they do need clothes, there are lots of more environmentally friendly or greener options for getting new clothes for your kids. So you can go to thrift stores, you can, you know, do a local swap with other moms, you can look for, um, like there are, you know, stores that aren't thrift stores so much, but like gently reused kind of stuff, consignment shops, you know, things like that. So, you know, you don't have to go to, you know, the big box stores and say, oh, I need one of these, one of these, one of these, one of these, right? Those clothes, generally speaking, aren't going to last as long because they're not made quite as well, right? They are you know, not generally made in this country, you know, so they, you know, are generally made to be cheap and to wear out quickly so that you will buy more sooner. Okay, so if you want to take better care of the planet, think less about fast fashion and more about durable fashion, slow fashion, you know, things that are going to last so that your kids can actually wear them for longer than just, you know, a season. Um, and if not just, you know, your kids, that you can pass them on to other kids if you only have one kid or, you know, if your kids don't share clothes. Um, there are certainly shirts that my daughter wore that my, you know, son wore that my next kid will also wear because they're still in good condition. So remember that clothes can be passed down, shared, traded, all kinds of things. There are also lots of really awesome, responsible clothing companies out there that make affordable clothes for kids that are still not super fast fashion and that are doing better things for the world. So check those companies out, do your research and check them out. Okay, so the last thing that I wanna talk about is how to green your kid's lunchtime situation. So we've already talked about how to reuse those lunch boxes that they might have used the year before. That's pretty standard. What I want to talk about now is actually what do you put in the lunch box? How do you pack their food without using Ziplocs or paper bags or, you know, pretty much anything that can be thrown away after a single use, right? Which is not only a Ziploc, but it's also juice boxes. It's also those single wrapped snack packs, you know, that have like goldfish in them or that have like gummies in them or, you know, that have any number of things, pretzels, cheese, anything in them, right? Anything that your kid is going to literally pull their food out of and then immediately throw that wrapping away. Okay, I know how convenient those things are. I really do, but <laughs> there is a better way, I promise. Okay, and it doesn't really take much more of your time. So what I like to do for both of my kids, so my daughter is in first grade and my son is in preschool, what I like to do for both of them is I pack all of their food in reusable containers. So whether it's a sandwich, whether it is, you know, like macaroni and cheese, whether, you know, it is like rice and something, <laughs> you know, my kids are weird, um, but no matter what it is, whether it's pretzels, whether it's a marshmallow, whether it's apples and carrots, doesn't matter what it is, I have a reusable bag for that. I have a reusable container for that. So some of the reusable containers that I use are glass, you know, that like snapware, some of the reusable containers I use are, you know, um, made, they're like cloth or beeswax or, you know, some other reusable material that has a zipper or has Velcro that can be used over and over and over again, that can be cleaned either by hand or in your dishwasher. Um, they're things that, you know, my kids can very easily use, 
reuse, 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 right? Things that, you know, are not only good for them, but also good for the planet. So if you want to give your kids goldfish for lunch, no problem. Get like a big bag of goldfish and then every day break up the goldfish into small, single servings in your reusable packs, right? If you really want to send your kid to school with juice, right? You can send your kid to school not only with one water bottle for water, but also like a smaller container, smaller bottle with a little bit of juice in it in her lunchbox, right? It does not have to be a juice box, right? I mean, just think of it this way, right? Think of every single Ziploc bag, every single, you know, juice box, every single single snack that you have sent with your kids. Where are those containers now? I mean, if they're not still on the floor of the cafeteria, <laughs> they're in a trash can or they're in a landfill, they're somewhere. And then multiply that by every kid in your child's class. And then multiply that by every single kid in the school. That's a lot of kids. That's a lot of single serving, single use plastic. And it's a little bit unnecessary. So if you really wanna green, your whole back to school situation, my recommendation is to focus on lunch and make sure that what you're packing in their lunch box is a little bit more environmentally friendly and a little bit harder to throw away. So there you have it. Those are my top tips for greening your back to school shopping and making more environmentally friendly choices when it comes to purchasing things for your kids in that back to school rush and that back to school madness right before they head back to school. Now, even if your kids have actually started school, you can implement some of these choices now. Okay, so if they've already started, no big deal, right? You can change up how you send them in for lunch. You can change up some of those things really, really easily starting today. It doesn't have to be, oh, I've got to wait until the next school year. No, start now, right? Make those choices now. Right? Think a little bit more consciously now because showing your kids how to reuse things, how to make better choices that not only support them but support the planet are really, really, really valuable life lessons that don't have to wait for the beginning of the year. Right? You, know, you can make those any time. Okay? So go ahead and think of one thing that you can do from all of these tips that I've offered that you think you can implement this year to make more environmentally sound choices as your kid goes back to school. And let me know what it is in the comments below so that I can cheer you on and support that really awesome decision. Um, if there's something that I didn't think of and you want to leave it in the comments, please do. I would love to hear it because I love hearing inspiration from you. What gets you sort of motivated to make better choices and what you do that might be a little bit different than I do. I would love to hear that also. So leave that comment in the comments below also. And as always, thanks for tuning in and for listening to me and for making those really powerful choices, not only again for your kid, but for the world that we live in. I look forward to chatting with you again really soon. And until then, bye.